Paul, this is our fifth uh, FQXI conference. Uh, I was at four, you were at five. Uh, we have a different themes. We've had time, information, physics of the observer now, and the multiverse, the idea of many universes, is a, a sub-theme virtually in everything that we do. It's always there as part of the background. Uh, um, I, I've sensed, and you're closer than I, that over time there's been an increasingly uh, strong commitment to the reality of the multiverse, much more more so than go back 10 years, certainly 20 years. Um, is, this, is this accurate? Do you think it's justified? It's certainly accurate. And now we have to distinguish the two different types of multiverse. Uh, one is that there are many universes, that many big bangs scattered throughout space and time, the cosmological multiverse, and the quantum multiverse, which is uh, that in quantum physics there's uncertainty, and then you make a measurement or an observation and you get a definite result and that's part of the measurement problem of quantum mechanics and the multiverse explanation of that uh, due to Hugh Everett back in the late 50s uh, is that uh, the, uh, all the possible outcomes of a quantum system, uh, uncertain as they are, uh, simply represent alternative realities, each of which is equally real mm -hmm. uh, and each comes with its own observers who think they're unique and so that's the... Uh, Right. So quick, the first one is eternal inflation, what, the inflation that created this universe, eternal many, many off, times, right. eternal yes. inflation. The latter is so-called yes. multi-world. Yes. And these worlds. two merge in the subject of quantum cosmology, but let's deal mm. with the, uh, the multiverse uh, just at the level of, say, an electron scatters off an atom, maybe it goes to the left, maybe it goes to the right. You observe to see, oh, it went to the right. It looks like uh, that has um, reduced the uncertainty. Uh, but in the many universes, or the multiverse explanation of quantum physics, the electron uh, goes to the right in one world and the left in another world, and each world is equally real, and each has an observer who thinks that they're unique. Yes, it went to the left. Yes, it went to the right. Uh, and that seems uh, bizarre at first sight, and it, uh, it was considered bizarre when it was first formulated uh, back in the 1960s, there were one or two champions. And I'm old enough to remember uh, how eccentric uh, these uh, supporters seemed to be. Uh, at one stage, it seemed that there was really only one distinguished sci scientist, uh, Bryce DeWitt, who was prepared to speak for it, and he wrote a book on it. Uh, but then, uh, over the years, it looked like uh, more and more people began to adhere to this point of view, uh, so that now um, it's almost become like a religious movement. I think I can say that because uh, at this very meeting, uh, a number of the participants have felt that they should declare their multiverse credentials before embarking on their talks, uh, almost like you know a badge of honor or something. Uh, and so. Uh, in polite company now, uh, if you don't uh, believe this uh, multiverse view, uh, you have to be very careful. And so uh, there's still a ha handful of people here who I think uh, have alternative views, and I think I'm one of them. I, I often say two cheers for the multiverse because <laughs> I think, um, you know, it's a nice try, but I think it has its, its own problems. And I can tell you part of the reason why it's become so fashionable, and that is... Uh, that if you're just dealing with an atom or an electron or something, you can always appeal to an external environment that somehow, by some magic we don't yet understand, turns uh, the uh, many different possibilities, uh, the potential realities that are present at the quantum level into a single actuality. Mm -hmm. uh, there's <clears throat> lots of physics that could go on in that transition from the micro to the macro. But uh, many of the people here are cosmologists, and they like to apply quantum physics to the universe as a whole. That's the subject of quantum cosmology. It was really put on the map by Jim Hartle, who's here, and, and Stephen Hawking in the early 1980s. And then you're, you're a bit stuck, because there is no environment. There's nothing outside that can mm -hmm. take this sort of shadowy <coughs> superposition of many possible universes and say, this one is actually projected out and is the, the reality. And so those people are sort of stuck with having to have that type of multiverse interpretation of quantum physics. Yeah, some cosmologists have said that there's been this migration of the cosmology community towards that for that reason. I, I was kind of taken yeah, aback. Yeah. It's an interesting sociological yeah, phenomenon. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a PhD thesis <laughs> in it somewhere. And uh, and I've seen the, the pendulum swing uh, more or less in the same way as I've seen uh, the movement from uh, life is a bizarre freak 
unique to Earth, which was the prevailing view in the 60s and 70s, to the universe is teeming with life. Uh, and yet the scientific facts have remained <laughs> pretty much the same. And it's really a sociological, it's a fashion mm. pendulum. And I would say the same is true of the multiverse as well. So if we have these two categories of multiverse, ways of generating multiverse, et eternal inflation, which are the big bubbles or pocket universes that we see macroscopically, and this microscopic uh, many worlds universe, you, you really can have a nesting of one in the other and the multiplicity of infinities, uh, you know, I, I guess the one infinity is incredible enough, but you have nesting of infinities. It, you know, I, I just stopped to ask myself, uh, how could reality be like that? Right, and now it's easy to bandy this word infinity around. You actually have to be very careful when you're, you're talking about infinite categories. Uh, there's a, a mathematical problem called the measure problem, that if you're going to compare one infinity with mm. the other, you better have some rigorous definition of what you're talking about. And a lot of this... Uh, multiplication of universes and things uh, doesn't actually come with any very well defined measure. Now, let me give you an argument that uh, has always bothered me if you're going to take go down this multiverse path uh, uh, as seriously as some people seem to. Uh, and that is that uh, wh why stop with all the different branches of the wave function, all the different big bangs and so on? Uh, we recognize that it will be possible in possibly the near future, for us to be able to simulate worlds. We'll have virtual worlds with virtual observers. So if we can create in some super duper computing system uh, a, a, a being who uh, is conscious and uh, perceives a world, but a fake world, um, we can create fake worlds. Uh, and sometimes it's called the simulation argument. How do we know we're not in a mm -hmm. fake world? Mm -hmm. There's been some discussion sure. in this meeting about uh, maybe we're, we're tricked or maybe mm -hmm. a simulation in some uh, super duper computer somewhere. Um, but then uh, we, we have to, if we're going to be real about this multiverse, we have to include all of those fake universes along with the real ones. Uh, and because fake universes are so much cheaper to make than real ones, um, they would uh, surely, in the great scheme of things, proliferate. And so the vast majority of universes, if you go down this path, this multiverse path, the vast majority of those universes are in fact fake universes. But now you're hoist by your own petard because uh, these fake universes have fake laws uh, inserted into them by whatever system is uh, simulating them. Uh, and if this, if we're living in a fake universe, we have no reason to suppose that the laws that uh, we have deduced are actually the real laws. And so all the uh, extrapolation to, well, there must be lots of big bangs and so on, is based on these fake laws. <laughs> and so uh, I think this is like a reductio ad absurdum of, of the, the extreme version of the multiverse that some people espouse.